Yo, what's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's talk about it, good people. Uh, I want to say thank y'all for the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. You only get <laughs> one day you're born and one day you die, but <laughs> the anniversary every time, even though my birthday is celebrated for like weeks around the world. You know, it's an international event for me. <laughs> yes. It's a national holiday. My birthday is an event. <laughs> so the actual, just because today is a Wednesday, there wasn't nothing really going on today, so there wasn't no need to really do anything extravagant. Now, as opposed to what was going on with me and how I was moving out here. Well, it was quite different. You know, it was quite different. Um, wasn't like how Giannis was moving. <laughs> Giannis did something and accomplished something LeBron James could never do. And he did it in such little time. And I'm so proud of Giannis for this accomplishment. Because LeBron James um, never um, got to that level. I remember on March 3rd, 2014, he played the Charlotte Bobcats. Right? The Bobcats were not a really good team at the time. And LeBron was allowed to get 61 points on this team. It's a team that was packing it in. Um, they weren't going to make the playoffs. And he was allowed to get 61 points for the only time in his career. So that was it. Now, when you look at Giannis scoring 64 points tonight against the Indiana Pacers, who was, according to the NBA, one of the top teams in the league, which they have been, but they were in the finals of the, the play-in tournament or whatever, in-season tournament. Well, I put it this way. Everything is steps. Giannis has already accomplished um, a lot of feats that LeBron James hadn't accomplished uh, at said time. So to me, Giannis played both ends of the floor viciously, defensively and offensively. LeBron is only on the offensive side of the ball. He slacks on defense. Giannis plays hard and doesn't cheat the game. That's the difference between the two. I try to explain this to LeBron fans, and they don't seem to get it. They try to say, they do the same thing. I'm like, no, they don't. Giannis is out there fighting hard to win with his team. He works. He works out venomously. He does not cheat the game. This guy here cheats. Well, that's why I don't respect him. I can't respect someone who disrespects the game in such a way. You know, then like LeBron got four championships. Giannis only got, what did he got, one? Giannis's one championship outweighs any championship LeBron James ever won. What superstar or a Hall of Fame player was on his team? He's the only player to do that with no other Hall of Famer that's going to be on that team. Giannis is going first ballot Hall of Fame. You can book it, okay? 
So there ain't going to be no questions about that. And he won a championship without no other Hall of Famer on his team. You name me another team that's going to have that. They're going to say LeBron and the Cavs when they won. I'm like, Kyrie Irving ain't going to go in the Hall of Fame. That what you've been telling me. Better guess again. And if you think they ain't going to put Kevin Love in the Hall of Fame, you better guess again. Now, LeBron has played 10 years longer than Giannis. Ten years. Ten years longer than Giannis. LeBron has a total of four MVPs. That means the most valuable player in basketball. Four. And he'd never get another one. And Giannis already has two. Okay. Giannis has been all NBA first team five times. LeBron has never won Defensive Player of the Year. Giannis has done that. LeBron was on six all defensive teams. Don't know why. Giannis has already got five out of his 10 years, more than half. <laughs> he's already got five. LeBron got six. Okay. Since y'all love stats so much, talk about that. All defensive first teams, LeBron got five. Giannis has four. So you play 21 seasons and you have five all defensive first teams. So that tells me only five years you were ever playing offense and defense. Is that what they telling me? Because I know they would BS because you really wasn't paying, playing no defense. They just putting you to hell off popularity of the team. But no. You don't get that. Not for me. Now. Giannis night was tainted because he decided to do something that was out of character, um, out of pocket and out of mind. And unfortunately for Giannis, he smeared his whole night without, you know, just getting too excited about a situation that did not require him to take the actions that he did. Fair use act. This is only for commentary purposes. We will not be broadcasting anything of the game. The game is actually over at this time. But I want you to look at this because there is a scrum that's going to happen on the court because of a misunderstanding. The Indiana Pacers took the game ball. And everybody is freaking out about it. Middleton's freaking out, thinking that Pacers are trying to do something dirty and foul and keep the game ball. And Tyrese Halliburton's like, what in the world? Why are you mad at me? Like, I didn't take a ball. Like, he doesn't know what's going on. The Pacers took the ball. That was no question that they took the game ball. And the reason they took the game ball and Giannis is breaking to the back to go get the ball. See, this is what Giannis has to learn self-control. You know, LeBron knows better. He's more political and diplomatic. He's not going to put on this scene in front of the, the whole world to see. 
He's going to make some calls, and that ball would have been delivered to him. But he's not going to do this. Giannis has got to learn, you can't do this. This is unacceptable. He rushes into the back to try to go retrieve the basketball. Now, there are two official game balls that are distributed. And the Pacers, as Rick Carlisle likes to put out, that the Indiana Pacers actually, the situation with them was that they actually had the game ball and they they were giving it to this guy who scored his first NBA point. Normally they give that ball to, uh, you know, they didn't know it was Giannis's most historic night and that the ball was going to go to him, but it's two game balls. If we take the other ball, it does not matter. They'll take one of the balls, they take the other ball. That's not a problem. But this could have been settled with conversation. Instead, people thought, you know, because – this is the third time, as Carlisle said, they've played in three weeks, which makes no sense. But due to this crazy tournament that they put together, this is why. So now temperature, I mean, yeah, well, temperatures are rising and the rivalry is getting started with these two teams. Indiana and Milwaukee always had problems with each other. All Midwest teams had problems. And then teams like the East Coast teams never really respected the Midwest teams. So they always like rallied together to get them. So when they come over and they play the Chicago, Milwaukee, and Indiana, all of that is like connected. Detroit is the only one that's further out because it's past Lake Michigan. So that's about four or five hours out. Ohio is another one that's kind of out, out there. You're looking at about a four or five hour drive to Ohio. So it's Indiana, Milwaukee, and Chicago are like the three that are connected. Like you can you can go to in from Milwaukee to Indiana in about an hour, hour and a half. You in Indiana? You can go to Chicago. Take you about, what, one hour, and you there. Indiana, be about hour and 40, and you there. So within two hours, you could be everywhere. Now, as you can see, they're trying to explain to Middleton, the Pacers assistant coach is trying to tell them, we got this, just relax. So they came back. I guess the deputies then told him, the NBA deputy commissioners, told him what was going to happen. And as he started explaining to him about the basketball, and he says, look, I will get the basketball. It's not a problem. He's like, look, y'all took my basketball and y'all did this on purpose. Giannis thinks you're disrespecting me. You're in Milwaukee and you're doing that. Giannis got to stop these antics on the court and calm the hell down. He did the same thing when he took the ladder and threw it and slung it. He almost hit a kid. Thank God that ladder didn't hit and injure a child. That would have been the biggest mistake in Giannis's career. He's got to learn to control himself. So in the back locker room, there's people that's ready to fight and scrum and other players are fighting and arguing because they don't know what this is really about. So you got Jay Crowder in there arguing thinking that they're up to something fishy. So the league officials and everybody there is trying to figure out what in the heck is somebody talking about. So finally, Giannis calms down, gives respect to his father, and then everything resumes. But it shouldn't have come to this. It should have never come to this. This all could have been solved and handled with simple conversation. Now, it's not about Giannis scoring 64 points. 
Now it's about Giannis losing his cool and going crazy about the ball. Now you've taken your moment and tainted it. You have to understand something that you're making a big scene over absolutely nothing. You're an outstanding basketball player, better than LeBron James. Yes, there's things you can't do, but they can't stop you doing what you do. You don't need the refs. You could actually go out there and physically dominate the game. You rebound aggressively. Right. He does all of the things you want him to do as a basketball player. That's what you want in a basketball player. But what you don't want is what you saw that presented itself in front of you. You don't want bad press. You don't want to embarrass the league and yourself and your team and the organization. And that's what he did. And Rick Carlisle is just a sandbag and SOB, but he was right this time. You know, looking like Jim Carrey. It was, uh, was unfortunate. There was, there was a misunderstanding about the game ball. Um, it was Oscar Sheeway's first NBA, official NBA point, so we always get the game ball. We were not thinking about Giannis's franchise record, so we grabbed the ball, and um, a couple of, couple of minutes later, several of their players ended up in our hallway, and there was a big, a big, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, a fracas, a melee, a melee, whatever. I don't think any punches were landed, but my general manager got elbowed in the ribs by one of their players, um, and... So he certainly has a bruised, bruised rib, and who knows, you know, if it's anything more than that. But um, unfortunate situation. We don't need the, the official game ball. There's two game balls there. Um, you know, we could have taken the other one, uh, but it didn't need to escalate to that. And so, you know, really just, you know, unfortunate. <clears throat> Third game we played these guys within two and a half, three weeks. So things are heated with the competition. And, uh, you know, I, I understand all that. But for it to come into the hallway was didn't need it didn't need to happen that way. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just explaining what happened. I mean, there's people tweeting things out there. I'm telling you exactly what happened. I'm, I'm not naming names, but I think it's pretty clear, you know, um, who was involved. And in, in, look, it's just you know, I think it'd been a three-hour game, you know, with with all the things going on and a zillion free throws and all that, and you know, just just too much, you know. I don't know who. I don't know who. I don't know who. I'm not naming any names. I'm just telling you what happened. <clears throat> there were four or there were four or five of their guys in our hallway, <laughs> you know. So anyway, just stuff that doesn't need to happen. You know, the, the, the thing with the ball is just, I mean, we don't care that much about <clears throat> the official game ball and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, but um, anyway, unfortunately, that'll be a bigger story. Unfortunately, and he's right. Unfortunately, that's going to be the bigger story. That's going to be the bigger story, unfortunately, is the melee, right? Or the scrum or whatever you want to call that. The way they handle it because people don't know how to communicate. You communicate first, then you go after everything else later. That's the way you do it. Well, everyone said, well, Giannis don't get assists like LeBron do. Really? You sure about that? In Giannis's best season, which is currently this one, he's averaging about 32 points a game.
<laughs> no one says Giannis is going to break the scoring record, but he's going to be in the top 10 by the time it's all said and done. So my thing is nobody cared about the all-time scoring record ever until LeBron got up there. Then y'all wanted to make it a thing. No one cared about it. Aver he averages five assists a game. LeBron averages seven. Two assists more than Giannis. When he has the ball in his hands more than Giannis. They average the same amount of steals. Giannis averaged more blocks, better defender, the whole nine. Better teammate, better person. He way he, he averages about 10 rebounds a game, more than LeBron averages. Giannis shoots 28% from three. LeBron shoots 33% on a career. They both shoot 70%. From the free throw line. So what are we talking about? Giannis shoots a higher percentage than LeBron. Because LeBron's shooting a whole bunch of wild threes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how people feel. Um, will the NBA find Giannis? Might he might? Who knows? It's crazy out here. This game is the game is not the way it used to be, and people gotta understand that. You're not playing back in the day. Mm. Well, you, you got a lot of people that have their own opinion towards things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, <laughs> Giannis isn't a team killer. Giannis didn't run. He stayed with Milwaukee and won with Milwaukee. Giannis went through real life while LeBron was being the created in the media darling who drunk his own Kool-Aid and, you know, reading his own hype sheet, brought goats to the restaurant. <laughs> you know, he's a propaganda piece that just keeps coming. So when you look at the tenacity of everything that you see on the table when it comes to these players, you have to ask yourself the main question, is it really worth it? What we're actually doing out here, is it really working? Is it really worth it? What is the premise of what we're doing here? Me, I've always been someone that says, treat people the way you want to be treated. 
That's how we were all raised with integrity, pride. Not everyone is going to be that way because they're not raised that way. I grew up in a household that expected and demanded nothing less. You were going to be a man. If you were a man, you're going to be a man. If you're a lady, you're going to be a lady. But what you wasn't going to do was disrespect the fabric of what we were. I couldn't do that. No way was I going to disrespect that fabric as I'm sitting in front of my fireplace here. There was no way, shape, or form I was going to disrespect the fabric of what our family had built. It's inexcusable for anyone to think other than I wasn't going to allow it. See that? Mother, father, grandparents, mother and father over there. That, that was my determination. That was what driven me to be great. LeBron had a yellow brick road laid out for him since 15 years old. Giannis Antetokounmpo was leaving a, living illegally in Greece with, a, with never having an opportunity to even own gym shoes. He had to work and go to school and go out there and sell on the streets, panhandle, peddlers. That's how they survived. They didn't have a license. They were illegals. They were being chased. And they had to search and find work. They had to study hard, all of the kids. They had a brother who was stuck and couldn't leave because he was too little to travel with the family when they were searching for a better life. And Giannis getting drafted, they were able to get visas for his family. You know, these are the things that people don't seem to understand the perseverance, the, the struggle of what he come from and why he's so determined and why he's so passionate about it. Because, you know, this was his life. The Milwaukee Bucks saved his life. It wasn't about just basketball. The Bucks believed in him and saved his family's life. They would have split the family up had he not got drafted by the NBA. He would have went to play ball in Spain somewhere. And the family would have just been split. Um, a lot of people say he's got potential, very thin frame, but he worked out every day, every day. And you want me to sit there and tell me a propaganda piece who had all of this athletic ability and talent, and he just sat there, squandered it just nonchalantly took shortcuts at the shortcuts. You know, I just, I can't praise that. I can't, I can't side with that. When he came in the league, I rooted for him because he was a young, athletic black guy with a lot of pressure on his head. And I'm trying to root for the young black man because he had a lot of pressure on him. And I'm like, he's handling it very well. And he put him in his right situations and everything else. Why do you think he ended up in Cleveland? You know, if they'd have put that guy on the Knicks or anything like that, that would have been entirely different. But when you handle a guy like that with kid gloves, you create your own monster. 
And he started to he tattooed the chosen one on his back because he was on Sports Illustrated. He was he's very influential and likes his his butt kiss, basically. Um, and it's it's been a problem. And the league know it's a problem. But, you know, they created their own monster. And, you know, David Stern was ready to pull the plug on LeBron and start going moving forward. But they didn't want to do that. This whole dress code thing, they tried to say, hey, he ain't with the times. David Stern is too old. He's blaming hip hop. Hip hop is the new turn in music. This is it. It's generating all these money. This money is billions of dollar corporations involved. And he's coming down hard on the rappers. He's bringing in these old country singers to sing to these, these kids that's out here like Allen Iverson. <laughs> they ain't caring about no country music. You go to the Patreon, you learn the truth about David Stern. <laughs> That's what you need to pay attention to. But anyway, I'm out. Shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life. Shouts out to Ticket TV, Dreamers Pro. Welcome to HDII TV, Jack Sports with Jose Rodriguez. And I'm up out of here, y'all. Deuces. I thought it was deuces. <laughs> but don't forget to like the video too. Just subscribe the whole nine.